What'd you just do? Nothing. What'd we're you live. just do? Nothing. We're good. What was the handshaking? Like, I'm over here, like, fixing stuff over here, and then you're, like, shaking your hand around. What'd you do? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> it's your boy, Dr. Glory Hog. Did you I hurt did, like, yourself? Hand thing. Did you hurt yourself, doctor? Oh, I can almost touch the camera. Look at Don't that. Don't do that. Don't All do right. that. Did Sorry, you? everybody. <laughs> We were here. We were waiting, and she was telling me, like, she's like, no one's on here. And I looked at my phone. I'm like, there's, like, 12 people watching, and they're talking. And she's like, so what? And I was like, we're not happened. live on YouTube. Here's what happened, everyone. Basically, I've switched back to Restream because we're doing some testing and stuff like that. I forgot to select it as an event, so I'm sure that, like, another YouTube thing came up that we were live, like, doing Australia again or something ridiculous. And then oh, I man. switched over, and it's basically a mess, so... Oh, did it do the thing it's where it made like a whole a new video again? Probably so. You know. Yikes. That's fun for me to fix Comment, after. like, and subscribe on our new video. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> He's shaking a Polaroid picture, says Andrew. I, Hello, Torch. I think it came through the right one, though, because like I didn't change over, and I'm on the right one. Did you? I don't know. Who knows what happened? I seen the wrong beacon. <laughs> Hello, Kabuki. Hello, Fatal, let's see your hello, Battle Cry, and Omar. How are all of you doing today? We have Thank Jim. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Jim was here on time. Heather. He made note of that. Thank you so much. Oh, Dr. Glory Hog was on here. Oh, that guy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a thing. You know, live streaming is its own beast, which we've talked about before. There's so many things that can go definitely wrong. Like, if we've done recorded stuff before where, like, the mics didn't pick it up, and you're like, oh, man, we got to start over. But when it's live, you got to fix it now. Yeah. It's in right in front of your face. Yeah, I'll have to fix the title on this and everything. I it totally messed up. It's totally my fault, everybody. So, hmm. yeah, it's a big mess. All right. Well, that's a thing. It's a big mess. It's a thing. But we got four amazing games to talk about. The best of the best. Am I doing my I'm YouTube sorry, voice? Are you, are you like hosting today's show? Dog? I don't know what you're doing. I was going to talk about something and then oh. you just derailed my whole thought. So let's no, just go let's it. just go ahead and no, I don't remember what it was. So that's not my fault. <laughs> Like a goldfish. Just... YouTube title is correct. I always blame the doctor. We should always blame the doctor. I'll just stick to YouTube. You know what? I appreciate it. You guys go ahead and stick to whatever platform works best for you. This is our trial that we're doing for all the different stuff and everything. Kind of getting some new stuff. Let's hear. Can't wait for Mythic Battle, says Ronnie. Yeah. We are reviewing four different Kickstarters today. And let's see here. Today we're going to start with Long Shot. So Long Shot is by Perplexed Games. And let me turn off my... Turn off my computer, Mike, so you all don't get blasted with music. The 100% oh, maximum volume. I was going to go ahead and talk about our live stuff and everything and oh, how yeah. there's no room for mistakes. Like, your mistakes are mistakes for the world. Hello, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, it's... There's a there's a difference between you know shooting a movie versus being in a play. And that's, that's what it is. Because if you're shooting a movie... You're like, you can hey, get that sound guy off the fantastic. stage. But if you're doing a play and your phone goes, <laughs> ba -da -ding, da -da -ding, da -da -ding, you got to be like, oh, Hark, what is that? A little bird I hear? I hear a bird. Turn off there. your phone. <laughs> and then you throw it out of your pocket. You're like, oh, I found that oh, little bird. Oh, there it went. It is yeah, gone. Yeah, it's got, you got to work it. You got to work it. <laughs> We've had interesting things happen. Stuff crash, dogs bust into the room, cats right? jump it on happens. the table. It happens. A battle cry is like, unsubscribe. Well, as long as you resubscribe again, okay? <laughs> Hello, Nosferatu. And Jay Rayner. Best of Star Trek, how are you doing today? I'll tell you, I Still have working. Dale, the casual gamer. I'll tell you, I have um, unsubscribed from the channel three times on accident. By, Did you? <laughs> by clicking stuff and going, oh, no, I unsubscribed. Crap. And having to resubscribe. I've done that, like, too. I'm probably at least the first thousand subscriptions. Happy I've made little, a thousand different accounts. And just... Happy little accidents. They're just happy little accidents, everyone. So oh, yeah. this is Long Shot. This is by Perplexed Games. They are the same people that did... Roland Wright. Roland Wright. The Roland Wright, Wright, Wright which was hilarious. Like, such a hilarious name. But this is a game for, I think it was one to eight players. Where that am I now? That? Yes, that sounds right. One to eight players. Should last about 25 minutes. This is a sort of, it's a roll and write, but it's also kind of like a little bit of a push your luck game, but not like in a bad push your luck way where you're just rolling dice and you're like, oh gosh, I hope this Can lands on my number. Can you tell she doesn't like push your luck games? <laughs> this is more like, hey, if I have enough pre-game planning, like the mid game and end game are going to be spectacular with this, but also still a roll and write. Like this has so many awesome things going on. Doctor, do you want to talk a little bit about it? 
Yeah, so the main aspect of it is it's a race. So you're rolling a die to see which horse activates. What's interesting about it is you might activate this orange horse. And that orange horse is going to have other horses that are going to... So that orange horse is going to go anywhere from like one to three movement, right? And then you're going to have additional movement that other horses are going to do. So like they're showing you right here. So if you roll the orange one, the blue one and the pink one might also go forward one space. Right. So you can do things to kind of mitigate those dice rolls by saying, I want number five to win, so I'm going to make sure that... I mark those X's off whenever it's my my turn to on other horses so that when any other horse moves, I know that number five is going to move at least once. So you can kind of do that one. It's very, it's a very quick game. It gets really exciting as you go along because the horses start bunching up in the middle and then they start to break away. And then you can use your your roll and write skills like you would in like in a Gonshan Clever something to mark things off. Like you mark a row off and I can move a horse back and she can move a horse forward and there's different things you can do to manipulate the board. So it's not just rolling the dice and going, I hope I get there. It's like rolling the dice and then like, how can I help it get there? So that, that makes a very big difference. It makes a huge difference because then you're not like slave to those dice and the rolls that they have. That's partly more towards the beginning. But once you get that strategy going on how you're going to maneuver, not just your roll and write board you have going on, but the other pieces in place with the horses and stuff, it... So good, everyone. <laughs> I can't explain to you how excited I am about this game. So this one, if it sounds interesting to you, we actually played this on Game Boy Geek, who's a friend of ours. Yeah. We do playthroughs on his channel. Also, we did two this week, which is why we only did one on our channel, because it's exhausting you know, doing three different games, like in a good way. But I mean, you when you're like having to learn them and play them all in a week, it does get to be like a lot. Oh my goodness. Lot. So everybody's going to go over to Kabuki Kids' house, because they're backing the Robinson Crusoe and V Commando, so... <laughs> We're all gonna come play games at your house, Kabuki. I'm kind of there with Petter. Like, I'm interested in Robin Crusoe, but I still haven't played mine yet. So I'm like, do I upgrade something I haven't played yet? Yes. Ugh, that is tough. So we played this one, so you can yeah. actually see what it's like. And I believe the designer was there for this one too, so that was pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. It's probably our well. It's like the only push your luck game that I think we would play a lot. I don't well, think we typically play them as much, Push Your Luck games. Right. I absolutely despise Push Your Luck games, specifically because I cannot control any sort of results, so it feels like it's completely random. And although you have a Push Your Luck feature in this, this does not feel like that at all. Like, it hit, you have the excitement of the Push Your Luck feature, but, like, you still feel like you're controlling things, you know? And Doctor, as far as roll and rights go, you don't like roll and write games usually. Right, but this one is a light, it's like added in. It's kind of like, you don't typically like deck builders as much, but if you add an area control, you're like, oh, I kind of like this. Right. There's there's not so much roll and write in this that I just get bored. It does seem like it makes sense. I'm using the, <laughs> the roll and write to fuel my dice, <laughs> which is kind of nice. Because a lot of times with the roll and write, you know, you just, you're just at the mercy of the dice and whatever you can pick. But this one I'm using my roll and write actions to fuel my dice, and I really enjoy that part. Honestly, going into this game, I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be cute. And when I came out of it, from playing through it several times, I was like, okay, I love this game. Like, and it's $25. It's $25, everyone. And the reason why you want to get it on Kickstarter is because you get extra horses. Yeah, so that's another All thing, All the extra too. horses. The version we had had two different horses, right? So your red horse, you had two different versions of it. And they have kind of punny names. Not as good as the ones that we came up with Battle Cry during the thing, like <laughs> Elmer's Glue. People were hot on the names, like and they Purina, were on it. Purina Dog Chow. <laughs> you know, things like that. The things you call the horses that don't win. <gasps> oh it's, my uh, goodness. But it was a lot of fun because we got to play it. And if the Kickstarter comes with more horses, that means just more combinations you can do. So it won't get as stale as fast by going, well, I know this is my favorite horse. I always get this horse. And it you know, if you have, you may have like three horses that are listed as number one. You can mix those up and they all have different uh, sp like special abilities on them. So yes. your game can change, not just based off of the horses and, and or the dice rolling. It's like the horses and playing their special abilities and who you get. That's a good point. So unlike an actual horse race where you just bet and you hope, this one you yeah. actually can buy a horse. That was the other so thing, So that's yeah. a big portion of it. Like you can win if you buy the right horse and you're going to really root for that horse by like kind of trying to push it over the finish line. But if I get, like on our two-player game, if you get the second and third place ones, that's actually more than the first place bounty. So right. it can really swing either way. Like it's... Well, that's one of the things is like, there's so many different ways to score in this. So you have like that awesome roll and write sort of point, point salad feature where it's like you get points over here, you get points over there. So you get money if you're 
YouTube died. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> this video has been removed by the uploader. Hmm. Oh my goodness. All right. Do, do, do. Doctor, gonna... distract quickly. Well, I don't even know who I'm distracting at this point in time. I don't know if anybody can see it. So, I don't know what's going on with YouTube. That's interesting. But we had a really good time playing this one. So hopefully you've switched to Twitch or you're watching it on Facebook, which is one of the good things about having it on Restream. And uh, Restream's supposed to stop it from uh, <clears throat> from it interrupting from a drop of internet. Good thing it did that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Battle Cry and everybody else. I will say this is probably the first time we played a push your luck game where you've won because almost every time we play push your luck my dice rolls end up getting me there but she actually got to win this one both times we played it and the horse you buy giving you special ability makes a really big difference it does because you really really want to pick the right horse at the right time you don't want to spend all your money too quickly because it's not easy to get a whole bunch of money back you can bet across the board or you can go heavy investments on one or two horses so there's a lot of different ways of doing it We'll go ahead and put the video back up on YouTube later. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about fixing it now, everybody. You'll have to watch on Twitch or Facebook. Good thing we had backup this time around, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> all right, doctor, and chat. So this is a twenty-five dollar game. Are you all interested in this game? I want to know, doctor. Twenty-five bucks. Yes, I am interested, and I would back it. You are interested, and, and you, you would back already it. backed it. And I already. Oh. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I was going to try to send a message, but there is no message. Yeah, she already backed this one. I was I surprised did. because the coffee we got looks like it is the production coffee, but it only came with the two horses. And once she saw that there was more horse I was options like, I'm here, getting all these horses. It. So we're going to give this game back. It. And the art's super cute on this game here, everyone, too. I'm super yeah, excited about it. Yeah, the horse names are good. Mm -hmm. It's all, I mean, there's nothing about this that I don't like. And it's, it can be a fast game. I like that you can play it up to eight players, too. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to introduce people to. I mean, it's a basic idea. You roll a die. Orange gets to move one, two, or three. Then what do you want to do from there is where all the hard decisions come from. Right. All right, next up, we have Hippocrates. And this is, is by... It's Hippocrates. No. Yeah, look. Hippocrates. Hippocrates. It's Hippocrates. Wow. <laughs> is it really hypocrisies? Hypotheses? How do you Hippocrates? say Hippocrates? How do you say it? Hippocrates? I call it Hippocrates. Hippocrates. Nah. That was like... All those people are dead. There's no way you know that's how it's said. <laughs> that was You're like just making up something now. It's Hippocrates. This is for one to four players. That should last about 90 minutes. This is going to be a Euro-style game. Let's see. Are they all blaming me on Discord for the YouTube issue? It's probably true. Petter, it's all your fault. I can't believe it. I can't yeah. believe you. <laughs> well, Petter, if you've got a spare moment, let them know that it is on Twitch and Absolutely. on Facebook. Which, I guess it's good that we are multi-streaming this time. So, Otherwise, it'd be gone forever. With this one here, you... miss these sweet hot takes. Are going to be... What? You're going to be putting your people out there. You're going to be collecting stuff. And you're basically, like, trying to collect and well, pay doctors to, like... Gotta, like, you've got to collect patients. Then you've got to collect the stuff to heal the patients. You've got to collect and pay your doctors. Then you got to decide, like, which ones you can heal and get them out. And then you're going to get money based off... Or victory points based off of that. So, it's, it's like a multi-step process. Like, you've got to, like... Get the patients, get the doctors, get the the ointments and the ungins, and then like heal people or not, your choice, <laughs> and then go from there. <clears throat> oh wait, you're telling people who could be only be watching on Facebook or Twitch, <laughs> they can only watch on Facebook or Twitch. Well, Petter is in Discord, Listen. so I'm hoping Listen. that Petter will tell people in Discord <laughs> to watch it there. I don't need you. I don't need your sass, Jim. I don't need your sass, so sir. So sassy today. <laughs> Listen, whenever your live stream cuts off in the middle, it's not a good time. I could just go cry if you'd prefer. <laughs> I have some buffalo flavored tater tots in the thing. I could go eat right now. Just go eat. They're buffalo flavored. <laughs> I've never had a buffalo, but apparently they're kind of spicy. So this is by Game Brewer. Game Brewer continues to make very interesting euro style games yes. i really like the fact that you are heavily planning in this game so you are having to collect all your resources and everything that you need in order to take those actions at the end of the turn and doctor and i kind of talked about that a little bit like can it have like an ap issue like an analysis paralysis where you're sitting there going like okay i need to have three purples five doctors two patients am i gonna have enough like that kind of stuff can kind of happen mm-hmm yeah, we're not sure what happened, Omar. <laughs> we 
We get buffalo flavored uh, tater tots. We got them at a grocery store. We well, got them at the 99 cent store, everyone. Does that, does that help? I think it was the 99 cent store. That's how you store. know we're actual YouTubers. Yeah, we went because to the we went to the 99 cent, cent store, store and we got food and it was delicious. And we got some <laughs> buffalo flavored tater tots. Because, I mean, let's be honest. Like, if you heard there was buffalo flavored tater tots at the gas station, you go and you get that stuff, no matter how shady looking that was, because they're delicious. They're buffalo yeah. flavored. Well, I mean, like, they're frozen. It's potatoes. Come on. <laughs> you can only make potatoes deadly so many ways. That's very true. <laughs> By drinking them. By eating the eyes. That's gross. Don't do that, everyone. It's dangerous. Don't eat anything's eyes, unless you're like in a water world type situation where you need to. Don't recommend. Doctor, what do you think of this game? I think it's interesting. I typically don't like games that take four steps in order to like complete a goal, if that makes sense. I tend to lean more towards the Amerithrash games where it's go get a resource, then use that resource instead of get a resource, get a resource, get a resource, get a resource. Remember that you have the right resources. Oh God, I hope you have the right resources. Oh no, I messed up and I messed up my whole plan at the very end of the game because I didn't have the right resources types of games. So I feel like this one might not be the perfect fit for me. I can handle multi-step, but I'm not like a chess player that like thinks six think turns ahead. That perhaps that is a you issue, doctor. I think there's other people that have that same issue. I'm just messing around. Like you, you do well, but here's the thing: <laughs> you get you do really well at these, but then you get into like these analysis process locks where you're like, and I'm like, are you gonna take your turn? And you're just sitting there like, but I want all the things. Who and doesn't so want all the me, things? Who doesn't want all the things? Right, Everybody but it drives wants all the me things. crazy. Because I'm just like, stick and move, let's go, what's next? And you're like... This is why, Paris, this is um, why if we devise some sort of attack plan, like, I'm going to have, I'm going to be the heavy planner, and then you get to be the reactionary. Right, well that's yeah. how it usually works out well. Because once, <sighs> you can plan out the battle, and then as soon as some stuff happens, I'm going to be like, oh, they're doing what? Oh, they think water's funny? Well, I brought my water wings, and I'm <laughs> jumping right in. Cool, apparently I had a Twitch account, so easy to come back. All hello. Right. Well, glad you made it. Absolutely. Yes, Petter. Petter did broke break YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, it's you can all horrible. blame Petter right now, okay? I don't so, know who you are on YouTube, but I love your last name, Grindstaff. That's like, a, <laughs> you could be an RPG player. Like, a, I'm going to name the next role playing game we have where you're like, what are you going to name your character? I'm like, Grindstaff. Grindstaff. Write it down. All right, hold on. We're doing hold it. On. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Thank your parents for having that name. <laughs> so I think this is interesting. It's got a custom insert by Meeple Maker. It's going to be in that folded spaces, broken token style where everything's open compartments, which is slightly, I mean, I prefer more customized with lids. That's my favorite style personally, but I know that's usually more expensive. <laughs> How and do you feel about them being cardboard <laughs> though? Like, cause it's going to be cardboard, not like wood or foam. Oh gosh, is Petter breaking Facebook now too? <laughs> You know what? Some days you just have streaming days like this, everyone. Nice. There's only so much we can do. It's not game trades, you're out. That's right. I like right. that. So, Fatal's saying, like, custom insert by Meeple Maker, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know much about Meeple Maker, honestly. So, we there's different realms. I feel like, although we compete for the same type of space, if you will, the open compartment style of, like, of Meeple Maker or Fold Space or Broken Joke is different than a customized, lidded option. So, and I also like Jim's comment with Paris and Panjoon and Fuji Koro. Those are all great games, and we love Game Brewer. Like, I really, really like Game Brewer I just Brewer think it's more, it goes more your way than, than my way, typically. Like, because Dwellings of Eldervale has a lot of different complex parts, but, like, it doesn't seem like a lot to me. But when I tried to teach it to somebody yesterday, it seemed like a whole lot. A whole lot. I haven't heard of them for cardboard. It looks legit, to be honest. They it, are legit. They... It looks like a folded spaces or a broken token and just made with cardboard instead. Yeah. So I don't Ooh. know. How will cardboard work? Like, Hold on. It's kind of bendy, right? Hold on. What am I looking at? Am I looking at the deluxe stuff? And let me look up. Hold on. Okay. So extra yeah. large game box. No, that's it. No, because like, look at these little vials. Hold on, everyone. Come back down here. Come back down here. Look at these medicine vials. Oh, I just want to drink out of those. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I just I just earned that paycheck. They're not bad. We're just better. I like brewing beer. Look at this. Look at this. These are gorgeous. We asked oh Game Brewer, God. too, like if they actually make beer. And they said they do have beer whenever they do conventions in Europe, right? Yeah, that they do have beer. But they don't make beer yet. Yet. 
Can you imagine? Mm. What, would a, what would a meeple flavored beer taste like? That's gross. Like, Doctor, like wood? you don't have meeple flavored like, beer. Mm, I can taste the wood and unwashed gamer hands. Mm, That's the mm, Kickstarter mm, edition. Mm. The Kickstarter edition's looking hot. Look at these metal coins. Oh my gosh. Oh, these are these look nice. Tastes like victory. <laughs> Whenever this is a little unknown fact. Whenever my kid is being a jerk, I get her in a headlock. And I'm like, smell it. Smell the armpit. Does it smell like freedom? I don't know why. That's what I thought of whenever Battle Cry's like, tastes oh, like God. victory. Oh, I like throwing in those types of random words it and stuff. Tastes like the tears of rage from table flip. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens if you're don't if you unable to pay your doctors at the end of this game. Okay, I'm just letting you know right now. Yeah. At the end of a round, if you can't pay your doctors, hops. boom, table flip. If you can't pay me, I will come to your house and break your leg. That's why I'm not a very good doctor. <laughs> That's why you're not a doctor. Right. I'm like, oh, you don't want to pay? I'm taking that leg back. Ew, Jim, gross. Disappointment in nerd funk. No. Like, like a Derek Funkheiser or just regular nerd drinking funk? drinking that. Why is clear colored plastic so cool? I don't know, Andy, but it is. It is like 115% cooler than regular tokens, right? I don't know. They look amazing. So I will say I got to play the fancy version of Dwellings of Elder Vale, and I am sad because I got to play with the yeah. meeples. Uh, the... The monsters are really monsters big. Monsters and bases and all yeah, that. Yeah, they're really big, but he had more options than I had, and I had to play the basic version because he never played the game before, and I was a little sad. I was a little sad about it. I was like, no. That's another thing. Like, whenever we're choosing all of these Kickstarters and everything, it's always sad whenever you don't back... The one. The one. The one that blows up. The one. Like, could you imagine if, been... if you wouldn't have backed Isle of Cats and everybody started getting that and talking about it and having the little wood cat meeples? Yeah. You would have been over here like, I need cat meeples. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's true because that happened with Tainted Grail because, you know, especially mm. we back so mm. many games. Mm. Tainted Grail. And based on income, you know, we have a certain budget that we can spend for board games and everything. And so we are just like all of you out there, like we can only purchase so many of these. We're making really tough choices and it's just We're already going to the dollar store, all right? And tougher. There's yeah. Only We've so many already sacrifices sacrificed we can make. our burritos and we're going to the dollar store for tater tots, okay? <laughs> but it's always sad whenever you find one that passed you by, you don't have all those extra Kickstarter components in it and everything. And I because I love Kickstarter so much because of stuff like that. Like, so much. 99% board game, 1% for food. That's Sometimes. pretty much it. <laughs> Here's the deal. Food is in and out. Games are forever, okay? That's so, right. Games are forever. I like Chris. I'll buy and use my game trays beverage holders. You mean <laughs> the drink trays? I think you know we brand all of our stuff with a Z at the end. They're drink trays. I'm going to have... If I ever leave game trays, I'm going to have the hardest time spelling trays without a Z. Yeah. Like just everything is Z. At the All right, Doctor. Would you back this game? Not at this time. I think this falls more into your style of game. I don't want to spend multiple actions just to find out I forgot to get the stupid purple vial and then have my people die. I love this. I really love the fact that you have to succeed in all these different things and then try to like run this engine at the end. So hopefully you comprised all those parts. And if you didn't, then you kind of got you have to figure out like how to make things work, you know. And I really, really like that portion of it. Like I'm really excited about that. And let's see, here. Dies Unis uh, DS Unis says I'm already saving for X Men United all in with Marvel. Sorry. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Oh my gosh! All right, so extreme. This game is eighty three dollars. Game Brewer makes excellent, excellent yeah. board games. So if you're interested in this game, I totally recommend getting the Kickstarter version because it's gonna look amazing. And it's going to be quality. I love it game does, It does look good. I think everyone's got a different gaming style, though, too. That's, yeah. that's always good to look at and know what you like. If you, I, feel, I told her the difference between, like, a worker placement and this is, like, a worker placement is, like, you go to your work, you get a paycheck at the end of the week, you can spend it. This is, like, you work for 10 years, and then you get one big check, and yeah. you have to pay back all of the expenses you've had over the last 10 years. Right. And I think, realistically, we both know I would fail that check. <laughs> I would just be like, I messed up. So Jim says, this was an instant back for me. Petter says, this is a pass for me. Not enough hippos or crates. That's understandable. It, the name was misleading for you, you know? <laughs> it's definitely a good value on this. I agree with Chris, but it is a pass currently. Absolutely. Okay, so next up we have 
this is on GameFound, everybody. So just as a note before Don't get freaked you, out. yeah. Hold on, let me get to the video. Don't get scared. This is a. That's not it. That's the camp system. Oh, just kidding. There's multiple videos here. You want to go to the very first one. It's a four or five minute video, and it doesn't really talk about game. Oh, you know what? That's right. Why it's even? That, why are we even going to watch just this? Just play video? it the whole time, so people can just like have something to, like eye candy besides well, me for just, once. <laughs> it's just going to be like. Art. It's art. It's beautiful art and everything, but it is just art on this here. So this is Hexplore. This is their fourth in the series. Yes. Which is a standalone game. Yes. So you can do standalone or you can combine them, right? Agreed. This is a highly thematic, like, uh, I don't want to say RPG, but RPG style game dungeon as you crawl, go. Yeah, there we go. Crawl. Cooperative dungeon Definitely. crawl. Absolutely. Doctor, do you want to go ahead and talk about this a little bit? Oh, it's Nosferatu Clown. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. I know who you are. <laughs> it is. I know some of the other people's names because we used to do Facebook also. So like, I know like Battle Cries and Fatal Paper Cuts, but I don't know everybody's name. Petters is really hard to figure out. So what's interesting about this one is it's a dark world. This is like the, like she said, this is the fourth one. It should fall somewhere between the first and the second one. So basically, the way they did it is they did complex, then this, or they did the first one, which is the least complex, then this one. Then their second one was more complex, and their third one was the most complex so far. There's like a whole graphic at the bottom. Absolutely. Andy is talking about it. Too. Yeah. yeah a good graphic. I, which I think it's, it's interesting to see that this one falls like in the middle. It's not their most complex one, but it's not their first easiest one either. And if you look at their BGG ratings, they've gone up in rating for every single one of them. So they're so just getting better and better. Exactly. I think I just really am into the characters. That's what really stood out to me was the different characters like, you know, you have, like, the cursed one who's, like, some kind of, like, rat dwarf goblin guy that does not look like he's had his best day. You've got some medium that has, like, spirits bursting out. You've got, gosh, so many different characters. You've got, like, a, a phasmo, phasmo mage or something like that, which is, like, somebody who's using, like, light, oh, a phasmo mancer or something like that. So instead of using just, like, fire, they're using light <laughs> instead, which is, like, a whole different thing. There's a lot of really interesting characters in this. Like, the they don't seem like cookie-cutter bad guys like your scout is a raven with a bunch of jewelry which actually makes sense so, that rat is a plague eater i don't know why he eats plague i think rats because they're plague, delicious though he's eating plagues <laughs> and that's his choice so nosferatu says there's wait there's a world outside of kickstarter there i had no idea now yeah now and which it, to be fair if it's probably worth talking about it we'll probably talk about is this it. connected to thor the dark world it kind of looks like it a little bit right like lots of very evil looking characters when they're it's, Heroes. You know what it is? It's a lot of bloodbending magic, like in Avatar. It's a lot of bloodbending. The bad guy here is all about blood and the power he can gain from blood. And I guess, like most heroes, you're trying to keep your blood inside of your body. I also didn't realize the miniatures were by Reaper miniatures, which I had just saw as I was scrolling down. I was like, oh, Reaper is a what renowned company for miniatures when you're doing like D&D miniatures and stuff like that. Yeah, like they've done Reaper it for miniatures. years. Yeah, mm -hmm, absolutely. So you know the mini minis are going to be awesome with it. Let's see here. I, I want to like it, but there's nothing drawing me in. And... Not even that little cute little werewolf who wants oh, just to give you a big, old, a big old hug. He's, he wants to give you a big old lick. Maybe right a on lick on your ear. Just... <laughs> <laughs> that hermit looks pretty good too. Like he looks a little feisty. I mean, you don't want to run into that hermit out in the middle of the forest. That's all I'm saying. A dude saying. just walking okay. around randomly with, <laughs> with a, an axe, a like, padded Ooh. jerkin and, and, a, and, a, and yeah, two-handed yeah. axe. You're like, why yeah. are you walking around with a murder weapon? I don't know, <laughs> just because. Better put blood inside the body. Take yeah, your nose. most of my heroes usually. actually play with most of their blood outside their body. I'm Yikes. usually running most of my scenarios with my heroes Yikes. at one health point. <laughs> That's how I like to play. You're just wobbling into each battle. <laughs> I go in and I'm like, I'm like, you ready to fight? Because I'm ready to die. And they're like, God, this guy hates himself. I'm like, I do, but I use that to fuel my punches. So Hexplore is for one to six players. It should last about 180 minutes. The Ooh. base price for this game is $99, I believe. That's so. three hours for us normal folk. Yeah, so it's it is. a longer is, game. I feel like, though, it's a really good deal. I mean, it's $99 and you're getting like this. A lot campaign style game i would think you'd have to compare it to something like a gloom haven to... right yeah and okay so actually i was going to talk about that a little bit the maybe darker though definitely darker and i feel like so gloom haven has this huge following of people like it's very thematic and everything it's very interactive 
And there's been a lot of other campaign style games that I feel like don't always measure up to Gloomhaven, you know? Right. Because of the story and everything based off, you know, of where you're going. And I feel like this one here, it's not like your Dungeons and Dragons box set dungeon crawler because I feel like that has no story or anything like that. Right, because you'll blurb and that's it. Right. I feel like this one has probably a good story, but maybe not the exact same choices in Gloomhaven. You know? So, well, like, if you want, like, that nice mid-range where you get lots of story and immersiveness and stuff, like, fantastic minis, this one's definitely more adult than, like, Gloomhaven and stuff, but it's not your Ravenloft box D&D, &D, you know, dungeon crawler set. Right. It's somewhere... I think this is probably going to be a little bit more RPG based than Gloomhaven is because Gloomhaven is card management. Right. This one's going to be more of a standard RPG based. I mean, I think it comes with dies, die and everything. Right. So I think there is that to consider. It's definitely going to have a little bit darker theme. It has like an Arkham Horror type feel to me mm -hmm. because a lot of the creepiness and <laughs> there's like investigations that you're doing, like you're unlocking clues and stuff too. And so I feel like those have like a little bit of story arcs on them. And it seems like whenever you fight a monster, there's multiple things they can do based off like what's rolled and everything. So I think that's interesting also. And we like Gloomhaven. We have everything Gloomhaven at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. So, Here we like, go. Here's the complexity so you know. chart, everyone. I yeah, wanted, this is I wanted a to dice get to that. chucker, which so, is different. Petter says, just go all in and get the 500 total. Yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. No problem. If I ever need a blood mage part in my party, I know who to call. You can just take all of the doctor's blood. It'll be good. It'll be good. I have extra blood. <laughs> I have extra blood. So I want to talk about something kind of interesting. Very, and you can see here, they're talking about village management, how complex yeah. it is. This is a very good graphic since they have four different games, which I really, really enjoyed that one. What, I feel like there's some type of like person that generates these types of games that comes up with these ideas. Like, that they come with these really complex ideas and they just don't know how to make it look visually appealing. Now, the art is great. I'm talking about like your player boards and stuff. Like on this one, your player board, you've got like a dry erase it looks like, and it looks like you've got like actual hexes on your board. I'm just confused. Like the graphics don't measure up the same way. Like I will say like Gloomhaven is pretty all throughout. I never feel like I'm just like, oh, this is where I write my stats. Where I feel like the character, the player boards for the characters here seems more like a traditional RPG style character sheet. And I, I just hate that. I want my stuff to be pretty. You want everything to be immersive, is yes. what you're saying. You don't want it to be yes. like, oh, here's some character stats all rolled up on a sheet yeah, here. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I like the little dials with art on them, or I like having a die that you put in that spot instead, so that it says, like, forward. It's like a swirly die. Yeah. Right, I'm paying a lot of money for games, all right? I'm going to be nitpicky. <laughs> I know that's very nitpicky. I don't think this is bad. I've put up with much worse. I mean, I used Aww. to have a, a white character sheet for, you know, Vampire the Masquerade, and that's all it was with just numbers in it. But I just think that if you're going to market it as a board game, it'd be nice if it looked like it leaned more towards the way board games are presented versus how RPGs are presented, if that makes sense. So there's a lot of comments here. So uh, Nosferatu says, my controversial statement for today is I don't like Reaper's models. That's kind of a bummer for me. That's sad. Oh, yeah, wow. but like totally understandable. If you That's don't fair. like them, you don't like them. Yeah. That's fair. They've been so, around forever. Battlecry says, yeah, I walk through the shadow of Gloomhaven box. I fear no evil for Isaac is with me. That's fair. <laughs> I will say, yeah. Gloomhaven is a pretty clean system. There, there can be a lot of things you have to keep track of, but it's a very clean system the way you, you play your I cards. Like, I like comparing Gloomhaven to a lot of these things because it's a base game that I think a lot of people have. And especially if you're getting into these dungeon crawler style games. What? I'm laughing because I like the distinction. It's a, lot, it's a game a lot of people have. It is, and Not they know, or, or at least they know of, and it's something you can compare to and be like, hey, it's like this, but X, Y, Z is different, and it gives people a good base of where to go to from from then. There's a very big difference between it's a game a lot of people have versus it's a game a lot of people have played through. <laughs> How dare you, doctor? <laughs> it's a game a lot of people you, have doctor? on their shelf of opportunity. <laughs> All right? A lot of people have it on their shelf of opportunity, is what I'm saying. It's an opportunistic game, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, so... So Fatal says there is art on the back, but yeah, it's on the back. Yeah, you'd have to flip that. I'm just saying, it's very nitpicky, but I do like some of the mechanics that you see in this one. It is definitely going to be more dice-focused, so there's going to be more random luck in it. Not that a modifier deck... I mean, a modifier deck is still very luck-based also, though, too. Blood I mean, it's, is... it's just a little bit less random. The blood is like water, but inside the body. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like blood's a teensy bit thicker than water. I'm Wait, just are you saying... saying... Blood is thicker just, than water? Just saying, yeah, I think so. Huh. I think so. I mean, huh. 
Last okay. time I checked, last time I checked, the you know. The fatal saying it's probably more comparable to say like Mage Knight and Mechanics, which Mage Knight okay. is a game that we also own but haven't played. We have at least played Gloomhaven. Well, here's the thing. So you have to pick the right type of dungeon, dungeon crawling, crawling experience for you. Yeah. So Gloomhaven is a fantastic introductory into that since this one has more RPG features. Like this would be a fantastic game to show like the RPG community. Like we all, I know personally we only have so many time for these huge long campaign style games. Like I'm I gotta fit them in. I'm laughing at Nosferatu because of the, the the wording of that. I finished Jaws of Lion, COVID killed my Gloomhaven party. Oh I don't think it literally <laughs> killed them, I'm hoping. Yeah. More like it killed your playtime. But the awkward wording. As for the actual game itself, it looks amazing and for ninety nine dollars I feel like it's a pretty dang yes. good deal that you can get your hands on everyone if you're interested in these style of games. I like, like the the clues and stuff. I feel like I, that makes it feel like you're more like you're investigating instead of just going through and trying to fight just monsters. Love right? the darkness of it all. I'm a huge fan of playing RPG campaigns where you're like the villains, like the villain RPG. But they're not these these are bad I know, guys, but, but they're I'm not saying, like they're not they're they're, they're not you know, the Lone Ranger I riding like, on a white horse. I know, but I feel like playing fallible characters is more unique than playing, and I'm the paladin that you've played 300 times before. You know That's what I'm fair. saying? Like, this has very unique playable characters in it, and that makes the game that much more interesting. I like it. I won't say I love it, but I like it. Chat, are you backing this game? Doctor, are you backing this game? I'm close on this one. I feel like... And I'm going to tell you guys a secret that my, you guys like, might not all know. We just got in Tainted Grail like two, three weeks ago. The base copy. So Petter hooked me up with a deal. I bought it. I got it. So I feel like I'm all full up. I'm going to play it for the first time tonight. Fatal and Petter said that he would teach us all how to play it. So Petter's going to teach Fatal, me, and her how to play it tonight. So I'm going to get my first taste of Tainted Grail tonight, which will be really good. She's played a little <laughs> bit. I haven't. So I'm really excited. So that makes it easier for me to pass on this one because I literally have another big campaign game in front of me that I'm, I'm going to get to try for the first time tonight that has those fallible heroes, like you said. Like, yeah. I mean, they're not all great. They're not the best of the best heroes, right? right. I know we have... I love it whenever you're not the best of the best heroes coming into I stuff. I know we backed Hell also, right, from Mythic Games. Didn't we back so. that one? I, I, so. I feel like we did. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back so, and look. So I feel like I'm pretty full on campaign games. I'm going to also give you guys another little peek behind the curtains. If you could guess, so we have Gloomhaven, Jaws of Lion, regular Gloomhaven, and everything else. If you could guess what campaign game we've gotten the farthest in that's a dungeon crawler, I'm curious what you guys think it is. I'm curious and, what they're going to say. And, so, why, and why you're wrong. Nosferatu here says, back to Massive Darkness 2, all in in Frosthaven, and yeah. I'm not allowed to have another dungeon. I totally understand. We did Frosthaven We're kind of too. at that point as well. It's like, how many can we fit into our schedule being... That Since we produce content. If we yes. didn't produce as much content as we did, heck yes, we would probably be playing a lot more campaign games because I devote a lot of hours to making these shows, you know? <laughs> right, let me see the difference. Battle Cry says Massive Darkness. Sandy says Stuff Fables. Petter says Reichbusters. So Reichbusters is pretty close up there. The one that we have the most playtime on and have gotten the farthest through multiple campaigns, multiple boxes, is Arcadia Quest. I freaking love Arcadia Quest so much, everyone. I'm going to tell you why. I don't even care if you don't want to know. I'm telling you. <laughs> Arcadia Quest is punny, which is amazing. It's easy to bring out into the table and teach people how to play. It's filled with a bunch of pop culture characters right. like Willow it's, and, and it's David exciting. Bowie. It's exciting because not only are you following like this little mini story of what's happening, but you're also like fighting your little guilds together and then trying to take down bosses. It so it's cute. like, it's, I don't know why it's just so satisfying to play and it's it's not as in-depth as like you know your gloom haven and stuff like that it's but it's easy to go through a couple like levels every yeah. time you get it out yeah it's well like rice busters and we you know it with the kid we played it by ourselves you can pick it up and you can play it and then when you put it back down like you're not afraid of like missing out on that story or coming back to it like you would like a legacy game or something right uh, see there you go so fatal says arcade quest is one of his game will what is one game his son will always say yes to yes nosferatu says would love it it's their unicorn, though, because they weren't on Kickstarter back then. Oh, and, no. Yeah, if you can get it without yeah. the Kickstarter stuff, you're missing out on a we lot. We have so many minis for it. Like, ooh, if we ever, if 
anybody's ever in, you know, the Phoenix area, we'll, we'll come out to some game store and we'll play it with you. Because we <laughs> like, have we'll bring so everything. much. We haven't <laughs> finished all the different dragons yeah. or the second box. The... Or the rides. The dragons or the rides. I don't think we've we, gotten We've done yet. some of the rides because we even went to like a thing oh, yeah, and that's got right. like I from a, straight up went to a game store, a game store just to get more rides because I was like, we're going here. And I took my kid too and I was like, you win me. You win me stuff, kid. And, and then they worked. attacked me the entire game. <laughs> exactly. That's but why we, we didn't get them. That's why we like the pack because most people in the pack are very witty and punny. For yes, sure. Absolutely, right? Like you, you all are amazing. You all know you're. I will so say, Arcade Quest takes up two full calyxes for us, so we have a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And we condense boxes. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. I'll have to show you all my solution for the minis because I have an excellent twenty dollars oh, solution yeah. for like over one hundred and twenty minis. So just keep them in the in the trash bag next to the. No. <laughs> Our massive darkness takes up a whole cube and then some and is still currently unplayed. Yeah. So yeah. we are at the point where we need to figure out if we are going to play, play it, it or move or it on. Yeah. Because at a certain point in time, it's got to compete with stuff like ISS Vanguard's coming oh, in. Oh, gosh. We have so we many have, things uh, coming in. What's the other one we got from Awaken Realms? Is the mind one that you backed. Oh, yeah. What was it? We got Journeys Through Middle Earth. There's a lot. Oh, no. I know. Etherfields. There we go. Etherfields. Etherfields. I really want to play that one. All We've right. We've got campaign games up the wazoo. <laughs> AKA help me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that really helps. I'll tell you one thing that really helps that Nasra oh. too. Get in a game, decide if it's better than other games that are similar to it, and if not, sell it. Right. So Which happens. Michael Maybe. says we have so many games that we kickstarted that we still have shrink wrapped on the shelf. Not enough time. I totally understand. Here's how you fix that. You open the shrink, you punch it, then put it back on your shelf and not touch it for four years. And then you're years. like, ta da, it's been unwrapped. <laughs> I've actually got to the point now where I feel like if I'm not going to play it right away, I try not to punch stuff. Yeah. So that way, if I ever do decide to move on, move it on without actually playing my copy of it, yeah. like I played somebody else's copy or something, I can sell it for more because, I mean, there's game. I sold a game recently, like last month, that basically paid for Tainted Grail. Like I sold it for a hundred dollars and I put that on a Tainted Grail and I paid like the twenty extra bucks or whatever it was, and I was like, yeah. Our animal is digging to China underneath the table. Yeah, so. just digging. <laughs> Yeah, I like to punch them, but uh, oh, sometimes right. you get in trouble with that. Next up, we have Ragnarok, or not Mythic Battles, Ragnarok. Ragnarok. Are you going to play? Are you going to play? You broke it. Just kidding. All Nothing's right. going to play So here's for what me. happened. Hela was put into Topor by her vampiric father, Odin, who put a stake through her heart, and then she came back. Which, oh. hold on one second, one second. I want to know. Pull well, out the internet today. Who, like, which? What is it? What do we say today? And um, who? What character? No, what character we would be? What question do we ask ourselves today? What superhero character would we be? We didn't ask ourselves that question today. Well, not today. We thought, no. Yeah, yeah, because we said the kid would be Spider-Man. Oh, you you're talking about Dr. us? Shaggy. Yeah. We. I said. I want to be Captain America, but realistically, I'm probably Doctor Strange. Right, but I want to know who everybody in our chat would be. So let me know what you would be, because I really, 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 really want to know. Okay, Petter almost took Twitch down too. Wow. Come on, Petter. Petter, be better. <laughs> yeah, if you had to be one Marvel superhero from the cinematic universe, so somebody that we've seen, which one would you be? Like, yeah. I feel like I, I try to portray myself as a Captain America, but realistically, I just want to be a. Better, better than you at everything, Doctor Strange, and eventually get broken, and then have to be good because I got broke. Ragnarok, though, is like such an excellent story of everything that's yes. happening. And they have what they had Fenris in here and stuff. And what character would you be, Doc's answer? I'd be Petter. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I mean, Petter does have the look I'm going for, and has a game collection I would be happy to have. So it is fatal, Thor. though. Thor, one hundred percent Thor. Okay, all right. Thor, that's Petter. fair. <laughs> Thor is legit. He is legit. They did a, such a good job with Thor Ragnarok to make him such a likable character, where some of the other ones he was not as fleshed out. <laughs> I liked you as soon as this fat, I'd be fat Thor. Thor. Yeah. I would be middle-aged Hulk, where he's just given up. He's got a couple kids. Oh, gosh. He's, like, let himself go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, oh, there's a Douglas Adams Kickstarter. I did not. Battle Cry, you're going to have to send me that link later. 
So what's going on in this game? Go ahead, Doctor. I'm sorry I derailed so, everybody. Mythic Battles is a skirmish game, right? It's got like terrain. You've got dice that you roll. You've got miniatures that you're fighting. You've got like your hero characters. You've got your basic troops. You've got like different levels of, of, of characters that you can play against that have different strengths and stuff. You've got cards. It feels like it might play a little bit like Undaunted where like you play, like you draw a card and then you play that card in order to activate that unit. So that, that was kind of interesting. There's a lot going on in this game. That was not a very good explanation, but man, is this a game. Oh, this looks so cool. And it's like a theme I really like. Oh my goodness. It's, oh, uh, I want oh, to look not... at all these, look at all these, oh, look at it. I 100% want this to not be a thing I have to look at because I tried to talk her out of it earlier because I'm like, ah, oh, we don't need this because we don't play a lot of these style games and we have like Shade Spire and we have like Super Fantasy Brawl and we don't play those enough to justify getting another one. But then like as I looked at it more, I'm like, I do kind of really want this. My, but my, I've been really hot in all the Viking games lately. I've gotten a lot of Viking games. Vikings are so hot right now, everyone. Just kidding. They've always been hot. Well, between like, <laughs> between like Hell and Tainted Grail and what's the other? There's another Viking game that we got recently too. So I think. Michael says they'd be Deadpool, which I'm totally like down with that. I love Deadpool so much. One of my favorite oh, characters. Cry. You can't post a link on Discord. She's, she doesn't have access to Discord. 90%. Doctor, why are you like this? Yeah, you can attack <laughs> people with trees. You can pick up a tree and throw it at somebody. <gasps> oh my gosh, what? Yeah, you, you can. Gonna, you can pick up trees in this game yes. and throw them. Yes, this is what I've been missing all my life. Like it looks... throwing stuff at people mid game. Oh that is like gosh. thanks. Do I get to be some amazing like gods and goddesses? So a lot of times you're fighting against like Hela okay, or okay. you know, Hell right. and. Freya and all these different people, but uh -huh, you get to uh -huh. be like cool people too. Like this is the Ragnarok. So Beowulf, R Brunhilde. Yeah. What Skagard? I don't know how to pronounce all these. Lagertha. Like Thera. Lagertha. Oh my it's God! Lagatha. Are they holding a head? Yeah. So Lagertha has a head or a shield. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. They're I'm really digging cool stuff. these. I like that. And then like you got you Fenrir that's got like the sword through his face. Heck with the hex floor it thing. Like this, I'm so, I'm super down with whatever this the, is. You got the Jotun, the ice giants. There's a lot of really cool stuff. You got your Berserker, you got your Yams Viking. Some Shield Maidens. This is the one you told me that I should not look at, right? <laughs> yeah. Because I kind of want it and I want you to talk me out of it. So here's what's really interesting. So when you roll, you have to, sometimes they might have like, say, like a strength of seven and you have to roll like a five and then you can roll again because you rolled a five, which is like the highest number you can roll. Yeah. But then when you do damage and stuff, see that little white slider there? It slides down. So, like, okay. when they take damage, you slide that down. Okay. And then, like, the normal humans don't have that because they're just, like, one shot, they're dead type characters and stuff. So, there's interesting strategies because there's, like, four different levels of troops that you can have based off, like, how strong they are. And you get to walk out there and you can win by, like, absorbing runes with, like, your main character. But if your main character dies, then you lose also. So, you don't want to, like, have them out there. But you do because they're the strongest, but you don't want them to die. All right. So, this is a skirmish style game. Yeah. It starts at 100 and like 120, right? Yeah, 100 and, 119. It was like, it was Lagatha all along. <laughs> do, 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 do. I'm really interested oh, in this one. It. I really like skirmish games like the dice a are lot. Cool. The dice are cool. They're just swords and it looks cool. Mm, okay, so then where's the game board? Does it have a game board, Doctor? Where'd yeah, the game Michael, board go? we are on Twitter. We're everywhere under Glory Hound. So just look for Glory Hound with Absolutely. two Ds at the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm the owner of Mystic Dragon Games. Yeah, look us up on Twitter and send us a message or something, or you can just go to gloryhound.com. That is our website, and you can send us an email directly from oh. there on the Contact Us. So Nasprat is talking about having drinking horns already. You know what? I have drinking horns, too. Are they in here? Except the doctor also uses it to call our dogs. This is how right, you yeah. get your dog to come yeah, to right. Can I tell it or the do you call of a drinking horn. You go ahead. So I have a drinking horn that has a, a cork in it, right? So you can unplug it and go... Brrr. So what I used to do with the dogs, I don't do it with this current dog, is I would have a bunch of, like, dog treats, right? Like, kind of cut up, like the kind of soft ones. Cut up, and I'd be at a park or something, or even just in the living room of the house. And I'd go, and if they would come running out, I would start throwing the treats all treats, over the ground, treats, like you would, treats, like you would for treats, chickens, treats. right? Oh. So you're just throwing treats everywhere. So they're freaking out. And they're like, I'm freaking out, and you're like, like the whole time they're doing it. So they got to the point where, whenever they hear that noise, they would freak out. So we would be hiking, and we could be going up a mountain or something, and they'd be kind of far off, and I'd go, and they'd come flying as fast as they can to come find out what's going on, and they start looking at the ground. They start looking at the ground. They start looking at the ground. So 
It was a lot of fun. I, I have love no Andy's regrets. comment. Ricola. Ricola. <laughs> yeah, it was Treat Bay. Treat Bay. There you go. Speaking from Treats. It was oh a good time. So I highly gosh. recommend it. If you have like a ridiculous you know horn, you could do it with like a, a trombone too. You could be like. And then the dogs come. They're like, what, 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 what? Yeah, like, I think that's the dog we it. have right now would run away scared, but. It's great. Maybe I'll get it on stream sometime and blow the horn. I'm sure you guys would all love that. No, let's she does not, not do that. that. Let's not she do put that. A, a moratorium on my horn blowing. She's yeah. like, stop blowing that horn in the house. Stop tuning your horn so much, doctor. But he never listens. He never listens. I even got a smaller one for the kids so that they could do it. So he'd be like, brr, and be like, brr. Is this the one with the two board sides, right? Uh, so there's a couple different two sides, boards, yeah. and there's, so you'll get a total of four different maps to be on. Right, which I really, really enjoy Look because... At that. He just threw that tree at those guys. <laughs> they dead. They're dead. And that guy's sucking up power. He's over here like, rune stone. You know, I am such a ham for skirmish style games, everyone. I don't Look know what berserkers. it is about skirmish style games, but I just love them so much because I love the tacticalness of it. I feel and, bad though that we have shade, like three different boxes of Shade Spire that we don't play. Yeah, but I don't. I want you to play Shade Spire with me, like really, really badly, Doctor. I played it with you. I played it. I like, want you to play it more with me. I played it at least five or six Listen, times with Doctor, you, Doctor. I just want you to play skirmish games with me. I just want you to play more games with me. Could you commit to more games Why with are me you like for this? the rest of my life? I'll tell you what. We play more games if we stop going on YouTube. I'm just saying. <laughs> We're not on YouTube right now, so... <laughs> we could just... If we just quit our jobs, how long could we Probably live fine. off Probably of the money fine. we have now? What, two, three weeks? That's two, three weeks worth of games. <laughs> so, chat, what do you think about this game? Are you going to be backing this game? Like, it looks good. It yeah. looks really good. I am, I have to say, I am tempted by it. What are it. the different pledges? I tried to talk myself here. out of it by saying, like, oh, I don't need it because I already have these other Viking games coming in and I don't, well, I don't play as many skirmish games. <laughs> it looks good. Because more you can also play divorce. this as, you can play against each other, but you can also kind of play it more of a, with a pre-made, like they'll, pre, so like instead of buying your army with points, they also have like pre-made ones where you can play like different sides of it based off of okay. that. And kind of like an overarching kind of like campaign. I don't know if it's like super linked or if it's just like here's some like historical battles that happened in like legendary battles that happened that you can play out. But there is some kind of storyline to it that you can kind of play. Okay. Like, I want to know, what is this? Okay, so War of the Gods Pledge. Yeah, there's so many things. So War of the Gods is going to have their other one. Because so they made this game three years ago with Greek Greek gods. It's like Zeus and okay, Hera and all okay. that. So this is the the Viking one, which is just better. I mean, it's a better Pantheon, I think Pantheon, Vikings honestly. and having a Viking skirmish game, just, yeah, the Pantheon stuff matches up better than the Greek gods and goddesses. The Greek gods and goddesses. That would make a better political game, honestly, because the Greek that's gods what they and were goddesses all about. Are more like, yeah, almost more like vampires, or not like as in that they drink blood. They might, but just like they kind of come in there, just like I'm more powerful than you. Zap. Yeah. Where, and, well, like they always have scheming going on where behind I will everybody's say The backs. cool thing about like the Viking gods, like the, oh, I shouldn't say Viking, but the Norwegian gods, is they would just like show up sometimes. They're like you're building a ship, cool, I'll help, and then I'll crack it. You know, like they would just do crazy stuff. They would just come into battle sometimes, and be like. Bloop, pull out your eyeball. Don't know why. Everything oh my God, is so I just do that. bloody and stuff in that sort of like pantheon and everything. Like everything yeah, is like this hard versus or one versus one. This hard versus bloody one. story of like crap happening and like then how like they made it better. It's always, it's really interesting. It's not necessarily like oh, such and such did such and such to me and now I hate them. Like it's not necessarily. The Vikings like just told you what they wanted to. They're like, I want you to blind yourself, and then I'll come help you. And you're like, and then, all right. And then I will give you all of the knowledge. Right? And you're like, like you well, know. I guess. Like, and then yes, hang the upside Norse down deities. on a tree. And they're like, makes sense. Let's do this. <laughs> I feel like they were more straightforward. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Doctor, will you be backing this game? I want to. Do we have the money to is the question. Always I would like to. I would like to. Oh, gosh, We're going to have to check like that to. one. Uh... Yeah, $300 for the all-in is a lot. This this feels to me almost like a primal awakening. Like I can get a part of it and see if I really, really like it. And then if I do, then maybe get more. I'm trying really hard not to go all-in on games, though. Unless it's for like component upgrades or something like that. Especially because since we're always doing... We're switching games all the time. Yeah, we're always trying to do new, new content, new new games in the queue for all of you. 
So a lot of times we don't have the ability to go through all of the extra content in all these games. So we have to like really, really, really think we're going to like it and want to play it and stuff, which we've made mistakes in the past about that already. So <laughs> my favorite is where Thara lost his hammer and had to pretend to be one of the goddesses and get married to get it back, right? Isn't that, like, they had such amazing stories in Thor's, like, Norse mythology. Like, it's, the stories are so interesting and entertaining and real. Like, they're real, you know? Whereas, like, in the Greek mythos, everything is so, I'm sure it matched the times, too, because everybody was very politically inclined and stuff like that, and you had senators roaming around and people, you know, I don't know. There's some it good just options. seems like it matches. They're form. trying to help us out here. Okay. So Corlesi says, is there a Patreon pledge to help you get it? We don't have one of those oh, currently set up, but yeah. we do have um, like Ko-Fi and right. Patreon. There are, there are various ways if you are interested. You can reach out to us on Discord. Or if, you go, our... if you go to our website, gloryhound.com, I believe you can go down where it's like, if you want to go ahead and just support the show for a dollar or something like that, and you can actually put any amount in there, I think, if you want to. As like that, a one-time pledge? Yeah, it's like a one-time yeah. thing. I try to make it as easy as possible for people so everybody's got you, different you all situations. can do whatever you want to do. Yeah, like, you know. I like Nosferatu. It's like, if you sell me that Arcadia quest, you get Ragnarok. <laughs> How dare you? That's one of our favorites. We'll play it with you, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if I'd ever get rid of Arcade Quest. I think it's a, a definite keeper. I think we need to yeah. do a video on that, like our games that that we've had for like over 10 years or five years or more, and we just won't get rid of. Organ donation to the P.O. Box, right? For Ooh. real? <laughs> mm. Need to go sell some plasma now, and okay? these aren't stories. These are <laughs> stories. They are stories. Well, that's pretty good. I like that one. I like that I'm one. excited. And a lot of times, you know what? We make all these judgments on, to what all of you want to see and what we're going to play whenever it comes in for all of you. So I feel like this particular one ranks up there for me. Like, I feel like this would be a fun play for everybody here. Oh, yeah. Of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure Norse stories are just magnified versions of the story your drunk uncle tells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I had to pretend to be a woman to get my mower back. I had to go over to Jim Bob in my, in, in my wife's best summer dress, and when he was distracted, I got my mower back. You have your beard on, you're like, hey. And I never dropped my Pabst Blue Ribbon I the need, whole I need my time. Mower. Never dropped it once. <laughs> like, it's basically, so basically what you're telling me is that Looney Tunes oh, is based off, my of, gosh. off of these stories here, right? Off of these... Uh, Looney off, the, off the Norse gods. Yeah, because Bugs Bunny would dress up like a woman all the time to get stuff back. No, yeah, that's true. Just that saying. is true. <laughs> all right. So, Doctor, what are you going to spend your burrito on for the week? So, I know we already backed Long Shot, but that was an easier back because it was inexpensive. If we can find a way to back Mythic Battles Ragnarok, that's my one. Okay. For sure. I'm going to have to say... We did already back long shots, so it doesn't count now because it's doesn't already in the queue. It's, it's already, already in the done. queue. It's already been burrito. That happened off okay? camera. That was an off, <laughs> off camera. But yeah, I think the Mythic Battles Ragnarok is right up my alley. Like, I'm super down for the skirmish games. I love Norse, Norse mythology. Like, it's so much fun. So much fun. I'd be really excited to play ant throwing trees and stuff like that. Like, I'm down. That's where I'd spend my burrito. Chat. Where are you spending trees. your burritos? Even if we didn't talk about it today, I want to know what all of you are backing out there. That's right. That's right. Jim says Hippocrates. 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 Same thing. Same <laughs> thing. Yeah, I mean, I do like skirmish games. It's not like I'm against them. They just what, tend to have a bigger buy-in. What didn't you like about the Warhammer set? We played it six times. I never said I didn't like it. We played it like six times. We played through every single set. You bought every single set there was that we could play with at the time, and we played through all of them. I don't know why that <laughs> makes you think I don't like it. I played them if all. Chris says, or Nosferatu says, if I get Ragnarok, I can't back Marvel United. I'm touring with indecision. Yeah. I get that. I don't think we'll back Marvel United necessarily, because we didn't back it the first time. So Yeah. I, I don't know if I was sold on the Walmart version we played enough to like want to go all in it because it's so expensive. And I already have like that Arcadia Quest style game. I know there are different well, style games, but I feel like I got a big old chibi game. <laughs> 
Even though it's very light on the hippos and the crates, I'm still willing to back it. That's fair. They should include one, like, hippo somewhere in it. Like, I would love art. to see the hippo in the crate, like, that all stuffed great. in there, like, where he's, like... What was that board game company called, like, One Free Elephant? That, like, they did, like, a little microbrew game and, like, in a tin, and it oh, came yeah. with a free elephant meeple oh, in yeah. there. Oh, yeah, that was really cool. And that was their whole deal. They're like, we always include one free One free elephant. elephant. <laughs> I don't know if they've made a bunch of other games since then, but that was when we saw, like, years ago. You can late back Marvel United. Oh, let's see here. So, I've already got the Arcadia Quest. <laughs> Ooh, we're backing the world's smallest inkless pin. I saw that, what? too. I started getting emails from GameFound where they're like, here's stuff that we picked just for you. And I'm like, you Interesting. Jerks. Interesting. Stop, stop trying to sell me non, non-board game related things. I don't have that kind of money. I saw this really cool camera that, like, rotates around. So, it has, like, the spotlight on it. And then the camera rotates around. And it's, like, supposed to be, like, really quiet and stuff. But it was, like... Eight hundred dollars for like the cheapest version of it you could get, and I was like, "Oh, cool, pass, pass." <laughs> you know how many board games you could get with that money? At least two. <laughs> a come on one and one other. At least two board one games. One come on okay? game and one other board game. Eight hundred bucks. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, thank you for everybody hanging out with us today. We really appreciate. Yeah, especially all with of the whole thing here. just crashing. I know. We'll Petter. have to. We'll have to throw this up back up on YouTube. I'll download it from somewhere and throw it up on YouTube and everything. But yeah, we appreciate all of you moving to other. What platforms. other platforms? There we go. Other platforms to hang out with us and everything. We all, definitely. We love the comments. You make us laugh so much. So. Ah. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen, Doctor. <laughs> the yell or the drop. What do we? What do we have planned? Games. We don't have anything planned for next week. We have to still decide. We're going to play, so like I said, we're going to play for the first time Tame to Grail tonight with some of the viewers in Discord. I don't think we're going to stream that because we're going to be learning this. There's going to be a lot of petters going, no, you can't do that to me probably. Doctor, God, you yeah. can't do that. Stop That's probably going to be like most of it. But we have, I mean, we have games that, gosh, we have a lot of games we have to decide on. Maybe we'll put up a poll again or something. Yeah, I was talking about that because we have enough in now that I feel like we can do a really good poll and then figure out what we want to play from there. Like, and it, it's one of those things, it's like, what it, I had Kitara from ILO Games. Path of Light and Shadow. Path of Light and Shadow. Merchant's Cove. Oh, yeah, the Merchant's Cove stuff, but that's later Steampunk in the month. Steampunk Rally Fusion. Oh, there we go. That was the other one, Steampunk Rally Fusion. I was like, that would be a good choice one. We just have a lot of stuff, so I think a Dwelling's Rematch. I would love to do that. We Never. Would do that. <laughs> we would do that. Uh, I played it yesterday. So, hey, I played Dwelling's yesterday with the first time with uh, Bryce, my coworker. <laughs> And he never played it before. And I got like 128 points, 140 something points. I lapped the board. It was crazy. It was crazy. And I wasn't even trying to play hard. Um, but it's because, like I told him, I'm like, dude, it's all about the dwellings. And he built like two or three dwellings, and I did six. And I'm like, it's all about the dwellings. I want to do like a miniature painting show where all of you just tell Doctor like all your hot tips, and he tries to like do those things, but then doesn't do them very well. It'll be an amazing miniature painting, like, segment. Yeah, I'm not good at miniature <laughs> painting. You're okay, but I think everybody giving you, like, super hot tips and stuff will really help out. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> or it'll go really know. badly and Petter's it'll be gonna amazing. going to get on there he's like, you need to dip it in mustard if you really want it to shine. I'll be like, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I love Dwellings. I'd play it again. It's one of the most played games of this year. I think the, our highest right now is My City, but to be, we only have like two more chapters before we're done with that one. Um, but I think the second one is is Dwellings because we've played it like seven times. Yeah. So if any of you want to hang out and join the pack, make sure to check out some of the links below. You can hang YouTube out in our Discord, is Discord the, party. The two most active places. Absolutely, and talk with us about anything really, not just Kickstarter games and stuff like games we're currently playing, games you're currently playing, whatever you want to do. Instagram Video games. and Facebook is yeah. good for pictures and for event updates, and Twitter is good for. Random glory hound musings and pictures of orchids. It's true. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see all of you later next week. Bye.